Wow, this video is a long time coming. Today I'm going to take you through the build of my DIY laser enclosure. And that's in five main steps. First, it's going to be cutting the plywood to size. Then it's going to be the assembly of the viewing panel, which is pretty interesting. Then we'll do the painting. And then I'm also going to do the assembly of the enclosure. And finally, the final setup. And so let's get started with the first step. And of course, the first thing we need to do for cutting the plywood is measuring everything out and marking it so that we can make accurate cuts. And I was actually pleasantly surprised when I got to the assembly stage of this project project later on that my measuring twice and cutting once actually worked out pretty well and everything seemed to fit together pretty nicely. And you may also like to know that it's all one half inch plywood that I'm using here and I was lucky enough to be able to find all of the plywood I needed and just scrap and extra wood that my dad had laying around in his shop which was super nice because I could save some money and didn't have to buy anything extra. And the cuts I'm making here are the rough cuts. In other words, these cuts here will form the basis of the exterior dimensions of the enclosure I'm building. And if you're curious, those dimensions are 54 and a quarter inches wide, 25 and a quarter inches deep, and 18 and about 3 8 inches tall. And by the way, if you'd like me to put together some plans for this, just write, I want plans in the comments. So you can see all of my panels here, and now we're gonna cut some of them an additional time. The main purpose of these additional detail cuts here are to accommodate the moving parts of the enclosure. So for example, I have to do the cuts of these side pieces here to allow the, the side of the lid to open up so I can lift the lid up where the viewing panels sit and, and open and close it. And then also the, the portion that I'm measuring out here is for the top of the enclosure. And I'm gonna do a small cut across the side. Yep, you can kind of see the size of it there. And that's where I'm gonna put a piano hinge across the top of the enclosure to allow the whole thing to sort of shift upwards. And if you're wondering how I came up with the specific measurements that I'm using for this enclosure, I actually put a lot of thought into this design and I wanted to come up with something that would meet a few specific requirements. First of all, it had to be large enough to accommodate my extended Xtool D1 Pro and other popular extended diode lasers like the Ortor, the Aetzer, or the Atom Stack in case I ever needed to replace the laser or wanted to replace the laser that I currently uh, am using. And it also had to be tall enough to easily accommodate a rotary and I wanted the distance between the open lid and the bottom to be far enough to be able to install a light burn camera. And that part was really tricky when I came to designing it and I was like modeling how far it would be and so that part was pretty tricky and the other requirement was it had to be able to fit two panels of laser safety acrylic without me having to cut or drill into it at all. Enclosure go like this. Mur, mur, mur. <laughs> Next, we started to build the viewing panel. And I think this is definitely one of the most unique parts of the design for my enclosure. And what we're doing here is actually cutting some boards to size to be one by threes. And so if you just bought one by threes or have some in your shop, you could skip some of the step I'm doing here. But the reason I think this is such a unique design, what we're about to do here, is we basically built the viewing panel front as if we were building a cabinet. And so if you know anything about cabinet design, and I gotta give credit to my dad because I didn't know this and he came up with the idea, I was originally going to screw my viewing, my laser safety glass onto the back of a frame and he had the idea to use a groove model where we could actually make grooves in the wood so that we could slide the panels right into that. And that's what we're about to cut right here on the table saw, we're going to drop it down and carve a groove on the edge of the boards so that we can slide the acrylic straight into it. And so this is similar to the design of a cabinet because a cabinet sort of has an external frame and then they have panels that go into the middle with grooves sort of like this. And so that's what we're putting together here and you'll see that uh, I also am going to use dowels here. And so we're gonna drill dowels on these sides and it's going to match up in, in the locations that I have these markings. So one goes to one, and then I've got my dowels, and I'm gonna drill holes in the, the little markings on either side, and then I'll put a dowel in between there. You can kind of see the, the mechanics of how this works. And this is the tool that we're actually gonna use to screw the little holes for our dowels, if you've never seen one of these before. And this was actually the very first time I personally had used one of these. So it was a kind of a fun learning experience for me to be able to use a new tool and a new process that I hadn't done before. And so this is a pretty simple method here. You're basically just lining up the little marks that I made on the wood with a little mark on the tool, and then it'll just kind of put your, your hole in the right place. You can see how it works here. There's just a little line on the tool, and it lines up with your mark on the wood, and then on the top of the tool, which you can kind of tighten down like a vise, there's a little hole, 
and that's where you put your little drill bit through. You will get some sawdust, or at least I did, and I just cleaned it out with a knife. After this, you just put some glue in, and uh, that's going to, of course, give some adhesive for your, your dowels to cling onto. And so then we're just putting in our little dowel pins, glue on, on both sides, and once we do this, we're basically just gonna start assembling it. But it's important to mention that I didn't put the top on, so I left it open because I wanted to paint it before I secured the acrylic panel in place. But I did put the acrylic panel in to test it first. Look at that. Whoa. That's nice. That is nice. Wow. I like the frame and panel idea. Yeah, I, I think, think this looks a lot, a lot better. nicer. And then I don't have More to screw support. through the panel. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. The next thing to do was the painting. And the first thing I did was just to apply with a brush some primer. And I should say that the whole painting process actually did take a pretty long time. But once you see the finished paint job and how everything looks when it's all done, you might decide that it is worth the time. Otherwise, you can, of course, just leave it unpainted with the wood surfaces. And after priming, what I did next was to spray paint the inside surfaces of the enclosure a matte black color. And I chose matte black because in theory at least, it should be the least reflective color. And so hopefully that will reduce at least a little bit the reflections coming from the inside of the enclosure to the outside. And I should also mention that the spray paint choice here was probably a little bit of a mistake. It probably would have been faster in hindsight just to use a brush and a can of paint and probably cheaper as well because spray paint is pricey. And on the outside surfaces here, I then did a dark navy blue color, mostly just because I liked the color. And you can see I kind of did a two-tone here. Probably would have been easier just to do it all black, but this is what I went with here. Then it was time to do the assembly. Now this was probably the most nerve-wracking step of all for reasons you'll soon see, but overall the assembly can be broken up into four main sub-steps. First it was the installation of the safety acrylic, which I'm doing here right now. And then it was the assembly of the top and bottom boxes Third is the attachment of those two boxes, and then finally the installation of hardware, so we'll go through all of those. As you can see, I'm doing the process now for putting in the acrylic panels and then fastening that top piece that we didn't put on earlier for this very purpose. And here I just have a rubber mallet and I'm going to be putting on that top piece with my dowels like we kind of talked about earlier in the video. And that's what it looks like when it's all done. Not bad. The next assembly sub-step was to put together the top box and the bottom box. They're really more like triangles, but once we start really putting them together, you'll see why I call them boxes. And in order to do this well, what we did was we used a square and we clamped it into place to get our right angle there on the bottom as close to 90 degrees as possible because of course this is sort of the base of the entire enclosure and so for all of the pieces to fit together and for the moving hinge components to actually open and close such that they're straight lines and not like whipper jawed if you know what I mean, we had to be pretty careful with getting things right on a square. For fasteners, we just used screws, but we also drilled pilot holes. So the basic process was to drill the pilot hole and then put in the screw. And for the little angled pieces that you can see I'm working on right here, we also put wood glue on the edges. So that was just an extra little bit of adhesion there. And if you're wondering how I drilled from one side and put it perfectly into the, the butt end or the joint end of the plywood, well, I used this little block of scrap wood to make sure that where I was putting the point of the screw was right in the middle of a piece of half inch plywood so that I wouldn't drill out the sides of the wood. After drilling together the back, the bottom, and the sides of this bottom box piece, we had one more little component to put into place here, and that's this little lip piece. There's this little pine board lip piece that would go here, what is on the, the front bottom of the enclosure, and so we just glued that up and also screwed it into place, and that was sort of the final step of assembling this bottom box. And then we are on to assembling the top box. So this is the box that will contain the viewing panel. And we started by gluing the, the top plate to the viewing panel here. And this is where things really started to get nerve wracking because we had to be really precise and careful with doing the drilling into the, the top panel here because this here is not plywood anymore. These are those pine boards, those one by threes that we prepared earlier. And there's a couple of reasons that this was so difficult. One it was more likely to splinter. So we actually had some scares with the wood cracking a little bit. It wasn't so bad that it was ruining the piece, but this is where we had to be really careful because just imagine us cracking one of these boards beyond repair or to the point where it's unusable. We'd have to go through the full process of putting together these nice boards with the grooves, putting on the paint and then putting the panels back in. So it would have been a huge mess. And so this was nerve wracking. And then also this is the most visible part 
of the enclosure. And so you want it to look nice, you don't want it to look all cracked, and you also want the, the screws that we're putting in here to be basically a, a, a very nice uniform distance apart. So I also try to be really careful to make them nice and uniform. Once I was finished screwing into the top panel that has those pine boards, things got a lot less nerve wracking because then I was back to just putting plywood into plywood because I was attaching these side pieces onto the top panel of plywood here. And so this was a, an easier process. And once I got this finished up, you can see the finished work here. And I think it turned out pretty good. Now we're on to the third sub step of a Assembly, which is attaching the two boxes. But before we actually put the two sides of the box together, we first put in some of this uh, window stripping that's like a foam adhesive window stripping to help seal the sides of the enclosure. And this is to help keep it really contained for the exhaust system. I went maybe a little bit overkill with the exhaust system, but that was my main motivation for making this enclosure was the first place in the first place was to really make a great containment system to exhaust the fumes from this laser. And so that's why I'm doing this step. And now we're just putting on the top panel, and this is going to be the, the part of the enclosure that attaches to the piano hinge. And that piano hinge is really the thing that connects this bottom box to the top box. And then it was time for the moment of truth to see if this box would line up the way that I wanted it to. And so we quickly learned that we would not be able to do it perfectly freehand. And so we carefully lined up one side and then we clamped it into place to make sure that side wouldn't budge. And then we went over and just double checked that the other side was still aligned before ultimately screwing in the piano hinge on the top. And then once we secured this piano hinge, we were pretty much ready for this lid to open and close. And that brings us to the fourth and final sub step of the assembly process that I'm calling the installation of hardware. And as you'll soon see, I am using the term hardware here very loosely. But the first thing that I did was to put these little holes into the side, a four inch hole on the left side and a six inch hole on the right side of the enclosure in order to install these duct connectors. And so these will be what connects to the, the ducts that pipe out to my inline exhaust systems on both sides of the enclosure. And I designed it so that I could have an input of air and an exhaust of air. And the next piece of hardware was installing these little handles on the front of the enclosure for opening and closing the lid. And I pre-drilled holes for these. And then what I chose to use as handles here are little wooden handles that I found on Amazon. If you want to see the exact one and if you want to build something similar, I'll put links to these on, in the description below. I probably will try to find out how to do the uh, Amazon affiliate links for these. And so if you want to support the channel and give me a little bit of a commission on some of those things, I'll put some of those links down in the description so you can do that if you Want to. Now here's a look at the handles all on there installed and everything and I think it turned out pretty nice. And I already told you about this foam weatherproofing that I put on the edges of the enclosure where the, the lid would shut in order to keep the smoke and exhaust and things inside and contained. But there are some cracks and crevices still on this box, especially around the angles like you can see here with the light coming through where I decided I needed some additional sealing. And so I got one of these little tubes of silicone and I just filled in all of the internal angles and, and edges of where the wood meets inside the enclosure to make sure it would be all sealed and not let any of the smoke escape. And that brings us to the final but critically important step of setup. So the first thing I had to do was measure things out so that I could drill the holes in the back of my enclosure to allow me to pass through the power and USB cable from the laser to the outside. And once I got this all measured and lined up, I also took an extra step to put some duct tape around the wires so that I would seal the additional gaps around the wires. It was a pretty tight fit, but this just kind of prevented any additional smoke from escaping that way. And then I did basically the same thing for the air assist. So I drilled the hole in the top, pretty much dead center in the middle of the enclosure at the top. And then I, I put a little hole in some tape and then fed that through to the laser diode head. And I went ahead and hooked up the air assist on the outside of the enclosure and I just kind of put it behind it as well. And then I went ahead and put in the metal base plates for my honeycombs. And at the time of, of setting this all up initially, I did have two separate honeycombs that I was using for the extended Xtool D1 Pro. Since then I have upgraded to a longer single honeycomb unit. And I also installed this fairly heavy duty trip light surge protector that I used to plug in my laser, my air assist, and my exhaust fan. And the final setup step was installing my exhaust system. And there were a lot of different parts to this because I had both an exhaust inline fan to hook up and also an input fan to draw more air into the system, uh, which I can talk about in another video. But for this one, I'm just gonna show you some quick highlights of what I did. So first of all, I just installed the ducting onto the enclosure itself and then into this inline fan that I mounted on the the wall sort of 
vertically like this. And then the next thing I had to do was to prepare some foam insulation with a cutout so that it would fit into my window that I have here in this basement room. And so that I would also be blocking out some of the weather, like the, the heat and the cold, while I'm also able to exhaust. And so I, I cut this out to size. And then once I got it put together with the right dimensions, I also taped it with some weather tape to kind of just do the best I can to insulate it and protect it from the elements. And then once I had this all together, then the next thing I did was really just to hook up the exhaust ducting from the fan to complete it at the window. And then I did this full process basically again on the other side of the enclosure. And here's what that looked like when it was done. And here we are, we finally made it to the fully functional laser enclosure. And I gotta say that I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It is now the only enclosure that I use for my laser engraving business. And it works way better than the pre-made enclosure that I was using before. There are still some things that I'd like to improve with this setup, including putting in some hydraulic struts to replace this board that I'm using to open the lid or to hold the lid open rather. And I also wanna put in a strip of LED lights and I'd like to also install that light burn camera which I haven't gotten to yet. But if you like this design and you would like to see those build plans, just a reminder to leave me a comment below that says, I want build plans just so I can see how many people are actually interested in that. And thanks for watching my video.